Thank you, Sangye, for inviting me to give a talk. Um, I would like to present my recent result about the reduced bandwidth, a qualitative strengthening of TNS in minor close classes. This is joint work, joint work with uh, Edward Bonnet and David. Um, yeah, we will, so we are interested in the TNS and generalizing the TNS to the, some general concept called the reduced F for some graph parameter f. And we, sh we strengthened that the previous result about that the minor closed classes and found the two minutes uh, for the some proper f. And we consider some powers of the minor closed classes. And we leave some open questions after all. Um, so I think um, so some people here are interested in the two minutes. So you are familiar with this, but I will just define again. Uh, we consider the operation of identifying two, two vertices. So two vertices are not necessarily be adjacent. Um, uh, uh, we, we consider also the graph where the sum of the edges are colored by red. So we call it a trigraph. So trigraph is a graph whose edges are colored black or red. So you, cons you can consider the black edges are normal edges and red edges are some special edges. And when you identify two vertices in V, w, v and W in the left hand graph, so, so the rule to color the edges in the new graph is that uh, so if you have, so you look at the neighborhood of V and neighborhood of W, and if, if the vertex X is in the symmetric difference of the, these two neighborhoods, then the edges between the new vertex and the X become red. And um, if, if x is in the common neighborhood, then um, if one of x, vx and wx was red, then the new edge also are red, and uh, otherwise it's become a black. So, so if you imagine that the two vertices were originally twins, they have the same neighborhood and all the edges are black, then the, after identifying the still the, uh, all edges are the black, but uh, no, in general, you may create uh, more red edges. Um, and we consider the, called the reduction sequence. So given a graph G, and uh, we just uh, sequentially uh, identify vertices. So, so Gn is the original graph G, and then um, so we obtain a Gi uh, from a Gi plus one by identifying any two vertices and the G1 is a singleton graph, then this sequence is called the reduction sequence, uh, as in the example. Um, so, but the, yeah. Uh, and then the twinness of graph is the minimum case such that there is a reduction sequence of G, such that the maximum red degree, so we consider that each vertex, the red, red, the, the the red edge is instant to some vertex, so it's called the red degree of the vertex, and the maximum red degree of each GI is in this case. Um, so in the picture that uh, in the during the during the sequence, all the red degree is m minus one, so it's a reduction sequence, uh, which give a twin is one. So the co graphs, it's known that the co graphs have twin is zero. So co graphs have a special property that in the, you take uh, any induced subgraph, you always have a twin. So you just identify two the twins into a one vertex, then you don't create any red edges, and uh, you can identify. So the co-graphs are the base class of uh, this twinist world, and you can easily figure out that the trees have twins and most two. Yeah, just uh, looking at the leaves and then identifying, and then, so you might create uh, some red edge. For, for instance, if you imagine the path, then the, you have to identify the leaf and the parent, then you make uh, one red edge, but uh, you keep it doing, then the, all the red edges, so all the red degree will be a one. But for general trees, so we, can, uh, we can make a reduction sequence where the maximum red degree is almost two. 
Yeah, just a note that uh, uh, this, this twin is was introduced by a bonnet king, Thomas A. Patrickant, in 2020. And they named the contraction sequence. Uh, we, we just uh, used the reduction sequence for the other name because uh, we really use the edge contractions in the <laughs> paper. And then it gave us some yeah, confusion. Um, so just a summary of the, the result is that the following classes are bounded to this, and reduction sequences can be obtained in polynomial time. The, the, the interesting fact is that uh, this bounded rank list graph and KT minor three graphs have a bounded to this. So for the ordinary uh, risk parameters, so uh, in a sense that the rank list graphs are the, uh, the close the graphs close to the some tree structure, right? But uh, we usually think that the KT minor three graphs or planar graphs are the uh, the structure that does not have a such certain tree-like structure. But uh, in the twinis uh, world, uh, they have all bounded twinis and still have some applications. So it seems like um, um, it's, it it gives uh, that the twinis is a good parameter. Somehow, and also they they generally prove that uh, if you take a uh, apple transduction of uh, bounded twinis graphs, then still have twinis. So especially the like map graphs have uh, bounded twinis, and some more other classes have bounded twinis. And they prove uh, some uh, meta type theorem that apple model taking can be solved in the linear time. Um, for instance, the uh, k independent set for fixed k. Um, so, the constant here depends on t and v and the twin with O of one. Yeah. yeah. So, so k is considered as a some fixed constant. So, so is it, it? So if you if you if you formulate the k independent set as a some formula, then the, this this sequence of so this so I didn't write the. Found the twin width. Ah yes. Ah, yes. Or, mm -hmm. Constant, right? Yeah, constant. constant. And this constant, how does it depend on, for example, KT? Um, um, yeah. yeah. So, so they, they gave, so, so they gave us some kind of uh, two to the two to the two to the some t or something like that in the paper. So it depends on the t, of course. And it's updated like that. Yeah. Yeah, and we try to generalize the concept of twinness to the, uh, the general function, where that we consider, so, so you imagine the twinness definition, we focus on the red degree of the graph uh, in the reduction sequence, right? So what if we replace the, this uh, maximum red degree with uh, some other graph parameter for red graphs? So we consider any natural graph parameter f, and then we define the reduce f as a max minimum case, such that there is a reduction sequence for which the maximum function of uh, gi is m plus k. So in this world, the uh, reduced maximum degree is just equal to the twinness. And uh, this is not a really new definition because uh, they also consider such a variation of twin is that uh, we consider the component size of the red graph in each, uh, each graph in the reduction sequence, then the, this is equivalent to the rank list. And if you consider the number of edges in the red graph, then the reduced number of edges is equivalent to linear rank list. And somehow the interesting fact was yeah, they are tight. Yeah, so, so reduce the number of edges means that uh, we replaced F with the number of, uh, uh, number of uh, red edges in GI. So when you say maximum degree, you're prophesying, you look at the subgraph edges by the red edges. Right? Uh, yes, yes, red, red edges. Yes. Yes. Maximum red, maximum red edges. Ah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ah, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. that. So all, all of them, them should, should be, be a F of the red, red subgraph of GI. Yeah. 
reduced to f is equal uh, I, uh, equivalent to the trees. Yeah, yeah that's so, a good question, but uh, I don't think there is a natural one. So it's, it looks like uh, difficult to find. Yeah. I think there was some question about that, and also the other notions. So, um, so the first observation is that f is bounded on all stars, then reduced f is bounded for all graphs. Because uh, we just give uh, any ordering of the vertices, and then just identify the, the sequentially, the first and second vertices. And then you will create uh, some star whose, whose center is on the leftmost vertex. And then you identify with the second and third vertex, then you again make a star and so on. But then if the f is bounded on all stars, then it should be bounded. Um, but in that case, uh, we may consider some maximum of f and delta. So you just avoid to have a maximum degree because uh, um, uh, you just avoid to have a large stars. And then we want to further restrict. So we may consider something like, uh, so reduced maximum degree is uh, two units. And for instance, if you like uh, three width, then you can take a maximum of three width and delta. Then this just means that uh, um, can you can you get a can get a sequence where that uh, um, every every graph every red graph has a maximum degree is bounded and also three width is bounded, something like that. And also you can consider the maximum of path width and delta and reduce bandwidth and so on. So, so what I thought was that uh, these kind of things, but we may consider other, we may adapt to other parameters as well, if you like. Um, so as, as we, as I thought, the component size will give a rank width and the number will, just be, uh, will give a linear rank width, but the distinguishing these parameters are the non-trivial, but uh, we know that there are differences between the following classes. So it's, it's easy to, easy to uh, uh, make an example where that, uh, for instance, uh, you know that uh, you, how to distinguish the trees and passes. Like you take a huge binary tree, then it has uh, small trees and large passes, right? But then the, um, you, if you replace the each, each vertex with a huge complete bipartite graph, and then the, between the original edge, you make a matching between them. Then, then the construction will have a small, re, uh, yeah, small reduced uh, maximum tree width uh, delta, but the unbounded reduced path width delta. Because, uh, because uh, if you, um, yeah, because, uh, um, yeah. So if you identify the uh, many vertices on here, then um, so you suddenly have a large red degree to the, the previous case. So somehow the, you have a, you have to identify here and here and here and so. So you will create the um, a large binary tree at some point. Yeah. So. Um, but uh, we are we are focusing on the reduced bandwidth because the uh, bandwidth will give so bounded bandwidth will give a bounded maximum degree. So we uh, so in this paper we focus on the re reduced bandwidth. Um, so what is a bandwidth? So bandwidth of a graph is the minimum k such that there is a permutation of the vertices such that if you look at the edges, then the ed the endpoints lie within the k k. Vertices. So obser observation is that if bandwidth is at most k, then you have uh, this sequence, and uh, you can see that the maximum degree is at most two k because for each vertex there are at most k vertices on the right hand side, and there are k there may be k vertices on the left hand side. So so this implies that the reduced bandwidth is uh, small, then the twin is also small, right? Because uh, just bandwidth is smaller than the maximum degrees. Yeah. So our main result is the following. So we put that the planar graph has a bounded reduced bandwidth, and uh, and actually uh, generally the any proper minor closed classes have a bounded reduced bandwidth, and also the uh, if there are R powers for fixed R would be. Uh, 
would, would have bounded with this kind of this. So, in fact, that, uh, uh, so one of the uh, selling points was that the previous bounds for planar graph, so the, uh, so as I said, uh, the twin papers already mentioned that planar graphs have bounded theories, but they use uh, some kind of grid structure in their, in their paper, and then this give us uh, some huge bound on the twinness, like a two, two to the one thousand or something like that. But uh, our our method was more direct, and then we give uh, some small bound. But actually, today there was just some improvement on the archive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, because uh, they they mentioned in the yesterday that uh, they <laughs> they want to do the archive. So. So they they slide actually the uh, so I presented this result on the BIRS workshop and then the, during the discussion the, we improved the, this number to the two hundred twenty three but then then they improve a little further but the, I think the basic basic idea is the same but they carefully uh, modify the, the small things I guess and. So I would like to sketch it, uh, the the uh, idea for the planar graphs and also map graphs and also uh, yeah shortly see the minor closed classes yeah so the so actually the so this is a, a kind of a use of the we we use the strong products CRM developed by uh, this small figure and others. That, yeah. So we say that the two graph for two graphs G and H, the strong product of G and H is the graph on the product set such that the two vertices are adjacent if and only if either the first first two yeah, first X and A are same and Y and B are adjacent, or Y and B are same and X and A are adjacent, or both are adjacent. Yeah. Maybe I can give us some example that yeah yeah for instance yeah for instance a b c d and maybe this is a g and h yes. yeah so then in the product you have uh, 40 uh, 20 vertices right And then uh, the first line means that uh, no, the second line. So if, if the the h are the same, then just copy the this graph. Right? So in each layer you have a full cycle, and then also in the same row you have the same graph with the h, like this. And then because of the third condition, um, for instance, a b are adjacent. And x and y are the adjacent, then the, so this should be also adjacent, and also this should be adjacent. Yeah, yeah. something like this, and also yeah. so so this kind of things happen sequentially. And uh, what they show is that uh, every planar graph is a subgraph of the strong product of the some some graph of three resemblance a. And some paths. And recently, the uh, Ukrat uh, and Wood and Yi improved that uh, actually the trees and most six uh, graphs is sufficient. And we also use the fact about the neighborhood complexity that uh, if you if you look at the planar graph and any vertex at S, then from S, S uh, of size n is three, then from the outside, so we consider that the, what kind of neighborhoods in S can be realized. So this number is bounded by uh, six times the uh, size of S minus.
yeah, this is a, a, some analysis. I mean, we also proved that uh, this is time. Uh, but I think uh, this is known somewhere, but we couldn't find uh, the proper literature. And the difficulty is that uh, when you I, so so when you identify some two vertices, then planarity of course may be destroyed, and it's hard to find the, some natural reduction sequence preserving the planarity. Um, but uh, what so but the idea is that uh, we will not really use the planarity uh, when constructing a reduction sequence. Just uh, use the product theorem, and then so we just. Uh, um, uh, con so make a reduction sequence where that uh, the number of backs in the, the H part is uh, smaller. So we prove by the number of backs in the H. So this is the idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here is a picture that uh, imagine that uh, you have a, a graph H uh, so of bounded trees. And you have uh, some paths. I didn't draw the paths, but this is just a copy of the original vertex set. And then the, the graphs are somewhere here. Right? So we know that uh, the, if you have a planar graph, it's a, it's a subgraph of such a structure. And then what you do is that uh, you just, uh, you just uh, take uh, some root of, of the H and then the, find the back B, which is uh, far from the root. And then internal. Then by the by the choice, so it only have uh, leaf backs in the in the below. And so assume that uh, if B has uh, two children, then we try to identify these two backs into the one back. But if we identify any any two vertices, then it may create a red edge to B which might be the difficult to deal with because uh, in general, it might have uh, many, many leap backs here, and then it may create a large red degree from the B side. But we want to avoid that situation. So uh, ju just the whole point is that, uh, um, so we want to find uh, any two vertices. Uh, then may not be a twins in the general, but uh, they have a twin to the B and the above part. Yeah. So, for instance, if you look at the real vertex uh, corresponding to the, this leap vertex, something like this, then the, its neighbors should be uh, contained in the consecutive three backs because uh, this is a really pass structure, and then uh, some backs on the left and right. right? So, so we just uh, make a free to uh, make a freedom to make some red edge to the the, the same Q1 or Q2, but just just do not create the red edge to the B part. So, yeah. But then, um, so we have, we just consider the number of vertices on the these three copies of B. But the, this is a bounded tree list. So tree list is a six. So the size of B is a seven. And then the, the this size of the union of three bag is 21. So if, if the size of the bag is uh, some, uh, if you apply the neighborhood complexity and then it's a bigger than that number, then you always can find the twin to that that three backs, and then you just contract. Otherwise, just identify uh, these backs into a one back. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, so this is there that the plan is that recursively merge paths corresponding to a Q1 and Q2 in each layer. And yeah, from left to right. Yeah, so you identify this bag and this bag and this bag and so on. Yeah, during the construction, um, so we will create uh, some red edges on the, this part. So that's important. And then uh, we want to make that uh, this graph has a bounded reduced bandwidth as bounded bandwidth. So this graph will be will generally look like this. So you have uh, some uh, subdivided the uh, uh, claw where that the each each vertex of degree one or two is replaced by uh, some cleave of size q, and then the center vertex is two q minus one. So observation is that delta of this graph is uh, five q minus two. 
So just uh, look at the some vertex in the degree three clip. And bandwidth is also small because uh, um, you just take uh, ordering from the one branch and then you go to the center and then you alternatively take uh, the, branch, the second branch and third branch. So you just go to the uh, uh, second branch, the, you, you go to the all the vertices of the first click and then go to the third branch, uh, the click in the third branch and so on. Then you can easily figure out that the bandwidth is small. Um, yeah, and also we, um, generally we need a concept of a KQ root decompression, uh, where that uh, uh, all the internal backs have a size k and most k plus one, as in the three decompression. But we just uh, um, allow to have uh, allow the lip backs to have a size and most q. So Q is something bigger number than K plus one. So Q corresponds to uh, um, the neighborhood complexity for the, the, the union of three internal backs. So it's like, uh, if you imagine the six times S minus nine for the planar graph, so we apply the six times, uh, three, three times the in, internal backs uh, minus nine or something like this. And then we call that, so, so we say that, so here we develop uh, some separation where the, the we choose uh, some back B and then the, we consider the sum children of the C and then the look at the union of the all the below of the, these children and D and then D is the other part. So such a separation is called the roofing separation. And uh, we also consider that in, in the general statement, uh, we say that F is good if it's close under a subgraph and this shows union. Yeah, so, so it's a bit wrong statement, but I just uh, uh, say about this. So the, our general proposition is that uh, if F is uh, some good parameter, um, and if, if there is uh, some universal function G for the bound of the F, on the this SXQ, so SXQ was the this left hand graph, um, and you have uh, some rooted three decomposition of uh, H. So H was on the the bounded tree with part, um, and then if P is uh, some path, um, and if F is uh, some trigraph whose vertices lie on here uh, with uh, these three condition, then we use F is small. So the three conditions, briefly speaking, that the uh, uh, red, edge, red edge condition is that the, all the red edges should be lie on some backs, leap backs. Yeah, so this is the one condition. And separation condition is that if you consider the root separation, um, then the neighborhood complexity to the, the D part should be a small. And the neighborhood condition is that uh, if you pick up some vertex uh, on the P, um, so like uh, if you pick up some vertex on the P part and then their neighbors are contained in the really uh, in the, the neighborhood on the uh, path part. Yeah. So because uh, we didn't say that uh, the edge is set also in the product part. So only vertex part is uh, uh, vertices are on the product. So, so we need to describe uh, some edge condition. So this will be a label condition. Yeah, so yeah. because so by proving this lemma, uh, yeah, we say that the band. So if we adapt the uh, k would be a six because uh, the plan is, the strong product theorem says that you have a bounded two in it. So two in it. So the any planar graph is a subgraph of a strong product of uh, some um, graph of uh, three with six. So we can adapt the uh, k as six. So because the yeah, the three is k would be a k, uh, kk would be three composition. Yeah, so we can adapt the k is a six, but q uh, should satisfy uh, this condition. So this will be a uh, so seven. So because this this three was a union of three backs, so this is a three times uh, seven times three, and then this is six times uh, s minus nine was a uh, um, neighborhood condition. And the neighborhood complexity function. So just by adapting this, so we 
we prove that the reduced bandwidth is uh, and twinness is uh, bounded like this. Um, yeah. So yeah, just uh, we contract like this, and then so when you have uh, one leap back, uh, we just identify the leap back and then the parent back, and and then um, in the similar manner. Um, so you can do something like this. And then we also have to consider the root separation on the, the above banks. So when you identify the, that the, we pre, so we have to be careful that the, we are preserving the, these three conditions so that the, so we can apply the induction. Yeah. So, so especially, so when you identify, the, we identify the uh, left to the right, so the so imagine that the, when you identify uh, some some uh, some here and here and then currently we are identifying the the, the third back, then the, the the red graphs looks like this. The, the previously the red edges are the lie between the lead backs and then so here are identified into the most cubaltices and here are the, we are considering two backs and the uh, uh, the ones we identify are two backs. In, so two vertices in the two backs, then the, the number of vertices are the MOS2 Q minus 1. And then we consider the two uh, backs, uh, the remaining part, remaining guys. So uh, uh, we, didn't, we didn't do any uh, contraction at the moment. So the red graphs generally look like during the construction. So this will give a bound for the reduced bandwidth. And also, so this is the end of the proof for the planar graph. And for the map graphs, uh, we have to, uh, for the map graphs, uh, uh, maybe I didn't write the definition of map graphs. The, map, the definition of map graphs is that, uh, so you, you consider the planar graphs. And so you pick a, um, so you pick a one vertex for each uh, uh, face. And then you add an edge if if the corresponding faces share any point, at least an a point. So here the this this four graph four vertices become a click, and then you have uh, something like this. Um, so map graphs generally have a large degree, but it's known that the map, any map graphs is an induced subgraph of the power of a uh, uh, two power of a uh, planar graph because. Uh, for instance, uh, here, um, so yeah, so removing uh, original edges. So so you can just uh, make uh, another planar graph uh, by making an edge like this. Um, yeah, and then the, so we so for the map graph, so we want to add an edge between these two, right? But then if you take a two power, then there is an edge between them. And then, so after we move, after taking a two power, then the, exactly the, we will create the map graphs between these vertices, and then we can remove the original vertices in the plan graphs. But we can generally prove that the, any power of the, uh, or the previous pre, uh, product structure, we have a bound. We can we can just modify that. Uh, so if you imagine that uh, we have uh, some subgraph of this product structure and then take uh, some power, then um, so, so so originally there might be uh, only edge between the just uh, adjacent guys, but now we may have uh, some edge to the uh, second second neighborhood guys. So um, but this does not make a big problem because we only consider the uh, our power of uh, this this graph, so it uh, still have a bounded bandwidth. Um, but also we have to consider that uh, um, when you consider the neighborhood complex to the B, so you might have uh, some edges to the here, right? Because uh, originally you might have uh, some uh, two edges like this, and then if you take the second power, you might have a direct edge to here, right? So, but uh, still uh, you only have to consider the five. Uh, Five effects in the, for instance, planar graphs, and then in the planar graphs, we need to bound the number of what is the number of uh, second second possible neighborhoods, 
for the sum part. But there is a sum bound on that, and then we can also use that. So, so uh, we can prove that, uh, for instance, the back graph sets bound with expand this. And um, generally, we can uh, we can generalize this idea to x minus three graphs because uh, uh, using the uh, yeah, minor three structure theorem, so to Zmobik and L, they prove that uh, uh, for every graph x there is there exists the two constants a and b such that every x minus three graph has uh, some trinity composition where that uh, every torso is a subgraph of uh, H product P, where H is a tree with sample P, and P is a sum pass, and plus K A, where where K A, this plus notation is just complete to each other. Okay. So this is called this corresponds to uh, uh, the apex vertices. Okay. This just meaning that you can you put a some a apex vertices, and then. Um, now is the now situation is slightly more complicated. Um, yeah. So so in the whole graph you have uh, some tree decomposition, right? Where um, so every back is uh, um, so the total of uh, this graph is a subgraph of uh, some um, product structure uh, with uh, some apex vertices, right? Um, but but if you only consider the one such a situation, then we can we can just extend our previous result because we only have to carefully consider that these apex vertices. But this does not big problem because uh, uh, when you, for instance, when you consider the neighborhood complexity, so we just consider the, this constant number of vertices additional. Because neighborhood complexity um, is bounded still, so we can just uh, we can so when you have a so bounded tree with graph uh, and then pass here, so you just reduce the uh, reduce the number of backs, uh, and then the at, at the end we can identify uh, all the things. But now this this one situation will give us some reduction sequence on the leaf backs. And then the, um, when, you, when you know the reduction sequence for the leaf backs, now for constructing a reduction sequence for the internal backs, we have to consider that uh, so for this back, uh, we know that this uh, product structure. But uh, there is uh, some clique uh, which is attached to the, the below backs, right? So we have to consider here, but we know that uh, there is a reduction sequence uh, out, so of uh, small bits for this part. And then, um, so we just uh, make uh, some uh, um, reduction sequence for all the things where then we first uh, reduce uh, this part into a smaller part, and then uh, do uh, whole things. Yeah, so this will give uh, so to generate uh, a reduction sequence in the recursive. Okay, yeah. So this is the whole point. And so, um, so what we know is that uh, um, from their result, the bounded rank with graphs, say KT minor three graphs and map graphs and unit interval graphs have bounded reduced bandwidth. But for other four classes, we don't know whether they have a um, bounded reduced bandwidth. Yeah. So because uh, to prove that uh, they have a bounded tunis, um, they they don't have a uh, so they prove uh, you know for the d dimensional grid is uh, simple, but for the other graphs, um, so they use uh, some uh, other tools and then we don't know how to adapt this proof for the reduced bandwidth. And yeah, some question is that uh, so we know that uh, there is uh, some improvement for the planar graphs, but we don't know whether that, that they can be improved to the like a 10 or I don't know what is the um, good law bound. Yeah, maybe this is a yeah, so combinatorial question. And the other 
interesting question is that is there any so we say that uh, f1 is uh, smaller than f2 so we can just give a uh, ordering of the functions where that uh, if f1 is less than f2 if there is uh, some function pi such that uh, f f2 value is uh, always so uh, at most uh, pi of f1 g so like uh, if you consider the pass with uh, three with then um, pass width is smaller than three with right because uh, three width is just uh, less than or equal to pass width right? So is there any graph parameter where that f is uh, smaller than bandwidth, uh, strictly smaller than bandwidth, and planar graphs have bounded reduced that? So it looks like an interesting question. We couldn't answer. Yeah. And um, the other question is that uh, so it is known that uh, so d dimensional grids have a uh, bounded tunis, but uh, yeah, because the planar graphs have a uh, bounded reduced bandwidth, so two dimensional grids should have bounded reduced bandwidth. But we see it seems that the three dimensional grids should have unbounded reduced bandwidth, but we don't know how to prove it because uh, so it feels like uh, because uh, we, the, to create the uh, tunis uh, reduction sequence. They they just take uh, some matching and then reduce. Then this will create uh, some two-dimensional grids, but two-dimensional grids have bounded uh, degree, right? So it doesn't uh, it doesn't have uh, any problem. But for but if you have a large grid, then it has unbounded bandwidth. So so it feels like a three-dimensional grid should have a large reduced bandwidth. But to give a low bound, somehow we have to consider the arbitrarily uh, reduction sequence, but I don't know how to prove it. So it looks like an interesting question. Okay, so thank you for... Thank you, any questions? Somebody has a So let me just check. So you, you have two bar, right? One for the reduced bandwidth and one for the reduced no, 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 yes. The bar for bandwidth doesn't imply your bar for three-width. No, no, three-width. Three three but, but, uh, but, but, uh, in the proposition, we put for the any f. And then you can, yeah, so maybe I can go back to the, yeah. So in this proposition, we just, so f is any good parameter where good just means that uh, it's close on the subgraph and it's joint linear. So it's, uh, you can adapt the delta maximum degree, then it give a uh, so twin is bound, and if you apply the bandwidth for f, then it give a reduced bandwidth. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, because it's just adapting the reduced so bandwidth to the maximum degree, then you have a two lower, but uh, yeah, two times, uh, but uh, we have a slightly uh, improved than that. If you directly apply this proposition. Uh, I have just one, one thing that says that the right bound is any. Uh, no, uh, I put any number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I don't have any feeling about this. Yeah. Mm. Because uh, because it, it seems like it's difficult to give a low bound. So, yeah. What's the best lower bound, you know? I, yeah. Maybe, maybe three or four, or four for the grid. I, I, I think, but I don't know any further. Uh, maybe, maybe there, there is, is something. something. I, I have to check. 